Welcome to Kangan Institute. This is an enrolment session for the Certificate 2 in Electrotechnology Study, Pre-Apprenticeship. Over the next few minutes, we'll go through the Pre-Apprenticeship Program, Timetable and Attendance, Pathways, Course Fees, uh, the Language and Literacy Numeracy Assessment, the Pre-Training Review. Participants who successfully complete the Certificate 2 in Electrotechnology Pre-Apprenticeship will have the knowledge and skills necessary to gain an apprenticeship with an employer in the electrical industry. So doing the certificate two, you will gain units that will go into your cert three, which is your pathway. Transition to apprenticeships. An apprenticeship is undertaken from both the employer and the employee to commit to the obligations and regulations of the apprenticeship. The agreement must be formalized by both parties completing the national training contract. Your local ASIN, uh, the Apprenticeship Support Network, will attend to your workplace and complete the NTC with you and your employer. After, this, after completing this uh, contract, you are then formally registered as an apprentice. Careers in electrical, so you'd be looking at going, if you do go into the pre-apprenticeship, that can take you into a certificate three in electrical machine repair, a certificate three in electrotechnology electrician, which is the apprenticeship, and of course, after that, you can become a licensed qualified electrician, uh, an electrical repair, a machine repair tradesperson, electrical contracting business owner. You can also become electrical contractors for ESB. Uh, course entry requirements. So most employers are looking for apprentices that have good literacy and numeracy skills. Uh, also that you've completed a high level of secondary school, preferably a year 12. Uh, have or are close to getting a car license as your jobs will be far uh, or have done work experience and have successfully completed a pre-vocational course. So these are the units that you will cover over the 12 week program. Uh, the ones highlighted here, here and here are the three units that will actually transfer into your certificate three. Considering we are an adult learning environment, we do expect that all students abide by the code of student behaviour. This includes policies relating to behaving in a responsible manner to ensure a good learning environment for all. No smoking on campus. The day that you do enrol, uh, your teacher will go through where you can go on the campus to go for smoking. You have to switch off your mobile phones in class. This is due to respect for your teachers so that they can teach the class without distractions. Uh, safe use of power tools only under direct supervision, anti-bullying and anti-discrimination. So your timetable. So basically the program will be running for 12 weeks. So Monday, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 8 a.m. till 4.30. And on Fridays, you get an early finish at 12 p.m. Uh, your, co your participants commit to attending all sessions as timetabled in order to complete the requirements of the certificate. Missed classes can and will impact on students' ability to pass all the components of this course, especially if you are looking at going into an apprenticeship. Um, how much does the course cost? Uh, please visit our website for our most up-to-date and any additional costs. Obviously, there is the free tuition. So again, on our website, that will go through all of that. So PPE. Uh, it protects you from hazards and students must have their PPA at all times or they will not be able to enter workshops or undertake practical work. So this obviously is for your own safety. Uh, you will need to supply your own steel cap work boots, overalls or pants in navy colour, work shorts in navy colour, glasses, safety, gloves and work shirts. During the program, you will receive a CI card. So that is the one from WorkSafe, which gets you onto sites. So this, uh, the WorkSafe identified a need to align the states to a national OH&S standard. So there are red, white, blue, and green cards that are for different states. Uh, the red card is only valid in Victoria. The CI card covers all states. Uh, so these are some hand tools. Again, when you do enrol, your teacher will go through all of this with you and let you know what is required. Communication. So um, two-way communication, obviously uh, that's through verbal. 
and mobile phones need to be turned off during class. Um, all of these safety signs will be around workshops, so familiarise yourself with them as well because they will be out on work site. Graduates at this level will have skills and knowledge for work and further learning. For example, safety requirements on a work site, uh, sustainability principles on a work site, components of building structures, basic quality principles in the construction industry, awareness of building codes and standards. As part of this course, students are encouraged to undertake 80 hours of work placement. You may know someone who is working in the industry and willing to give you a work placement or Kangam will assist in finding one for you. Uh, placement should not occur until the midpoint of your course. This is basically so that you do have your basic knowledge. Um, pathway options. Other pathways include the certificate to, uh, three in electrotechnology electrical. So that is when you become an apprentice. What's next? So when you do come in to enrol, you will start off with a pre-training review, just so you make so just to make sure that you are aware of what you are enrolling into and have all the information. Also, then you will do a literacy and numeracy assessment. So this will just determine what level you're working at and if you do meet the required level. Um, electrical specific literacy and numeracy skills test. So in the next coming days, you will be able to do your enrolment and paying the fees after that date. Uh, so after uh, the, this information session, successful candidates will be emailed detailing all the things you need to do to ensure you are able to enrol and given the maximum assistance uh, possible with your fees. So uh, please read this information carefully. That is the email that will come from the administration staff detailing all this information. If you have any questions, please contact them. Uh, you can also start applying for your USI number. It's a really easy process. So you just go to uh, usi.gov.au and follow the prompts. Enrollment for successful candidates. So students need to be enrolled prior to the course starting. So the same day that you come to do your pre-training review and your LLNN assessment, we do ask that you pay your fees. This will actually secure your spot uh, you can also pay a concession rate, that is if you do have a valid concession card from Centrelink. Uh, you must bring with you one of the following original documents to enrol. So an Australian birth certificate, a current green Medicare card, an Australian passport, or formal documentation issued by the Australian Department of Immigration and Border Protection uh, confirming permanent residence. If you are under 20 years of age, and the document provided from the above does not include a date of birth, you must also bring a current driver's license, learner permit or proof of age card. We also do require um, parental consent as well if you are under 20. Uh, process for unsuccessful candidates. If you're not successful in gaining a place in this pre-app group, you will be offered an option of enrolling into a literacy and numeracy program with our learning support team. This will provide particularly around improvement of your literacy and numeracy skills. By completing this program and demonstrating a commitment to improvement, you will be guaranteed a place in the next round of pre-app courses. So regarding the USI, so USI number is a unique number made up for yourself with numbers and letters. Uh, the USI will give you online access to your training records and results. So at any point you can actually go online and get transcripts for yourself if you are going to another TAFE or for your employer. Assessment it refers to undertaking the language literacy and numeracy assessment. It is designed to ensure potential students have the language literacy and numeracy set, uh, skills to benefit from their nominated course. It is nothing to worry about. It is an assessment just as a guide so that we know what level you're working at. Uh, if it's not possible to fail the LLNN. So if you were to not meet the required level, we do have other options and support programs that can get you to the level required. So this may mean that you will have to skip this intake, but you may be eligible for the next. All the best with enrolling and we hope to see you in the new year.